الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول. We come to the conclusion of Surah Al-Mutaffifin, the last set of verses of uh, Surah Al-Mutaffifin. And in this set of verses, Allah Azza wa Jal describes some of the suffering the weak and poor believers in Mecca used to uh, face when uh, from the uh, rather from the uh, disbelievers of the uh, Quraysh and how they used to harm them and mock them and uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Inna al-ladina ajramu kanu min al-ladina amanu yadhaku." Indeed, those who committed crimes, referring to the disbelievers, used to laugh at those who believed. Committed crimes. The worst crime anyone can commit is disbelief. And it is the only crime which Allah Azza wa Jal does not forgive. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrakabi. Allah does not forgive association with Him. Shirk. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ And he forgives anything less than that for whomever he wills or he wishes. And this verse that I just recited is the evidence used by the scholars who confirm that one who kills a believer deliberately will not be eternal in hell. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمُ خَالِدًا فِيهَا Whoever kills a believer deliberately, his recompense will be Jahannam and he will be eternally therein. So some said, this proves that a person who deliberately, a believer who deliberately kills another believer without due right will be eternal in Jahannam. But the other group of scholars said, no, it is only meant to show how severely he will be punished in hell and how long. But it is not eternity because Allah Azza wa Jal only excluded shirk from not being forgiven. And being forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal and not being included in shirk, meaning you are included on those who believe. And those who believe will eventually, regardless of how long they will be abiding in hell, will eventually go to Jannah. We ask Allah to admit us into Jannah without prior punishment. So, the verses before this one describe the bliss and pleasure the believers will enjoy. Uh, this was given to the believers to help them persevere through this suffering from Quraysh, this harm, this mockery the, the Quraysh used to do uh, against them. Uh, and that this is going to be the reward of your patience for the harm that you're facing. Uh, Subhanallah, when Allah Azza wa Jal reveals divine text describing the, 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 the state of the believers, the suffering they used to face uh, from the Quraysh, is in itself consoling by Allah Azza wa Jal to the believers. I am seeing your state, but your patience will entitle you for this reward. Indeed, this is something that will help them remain steadfast and persevere. And Allah Azza wa Jal used kanu, used to, in the past. It's as if Allah Azza wa Jal talking, was, He was talking to them at the time when it was happening. But He is using the past tense as if to say, this is gone, this is finished, this is so short, life is so short, suffering is so short, so just persevere and you will be entitled to get this pleasure. As if they have already reached 
Akhirah, and they have passed this state again, a way of consoling the believers and comforting their hearts. So Allah goes on to describe what the disbelievers used to do. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ And when they passed by them, they would exchange mocking glances. Right? They would mock them either by glances, by hand signs, by signs that they knew amongst themselves, the Quraysh, right? Just to bring sadness and make the believers feel humiliated as a result of their faith. And therefore, they were hoping that this mockery and laughter can push the believers out of the fold of Islam, can make them sacrifice their faith in return of not being mocked and living a safer life. وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمُ انْقَلَبُوا فَكِهِينَ And when they return to their people, the Quraysh that is, they would return jesting. After they fulfilled their desires, their low desires of mocking the believers and harming them, they would go back to their families or their friends, content with what they've done, and rejoice uh, at mocking and harming the believers. وَإِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ لَضَالُّونَ And when they saw them, meaning when the Quraysh saw the believers, they would say, indeed, those are truly lost. They're truly misguided. And this is the most astonishing thing that could happen. When a misguided person Describe someone else as being misguided. And it makes it worse when that described person is actually upon the truth. That makes it more saddening, more grieving to the heart of the believers. Because the believers knew for sure that these people were misguided. So when such misguided people describe them as people who are totally lost and misguided... It brings sadness to their hearts. Just like those liars, the Quraysh, called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthful and honest, a liar. This was one of the most severe sufferings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to be called a liar when he was known to be truthful. But again, it is to show us that once the heart is sealed, as a result of disbelief or sin, then expect the unexpected from that person. There will be no limit for transgression. There will be no limit to wronging others and demeaning others and belittling others. وَمَا أُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَافِظِينَ But they had not been sent as guardians over them. These disbelievers were not granted authority. They were not given permission to uh, administrate the affairs of the believers for them to say what they said and to act the way they acted. So today, meaning on the day of judgment. Again, notice Allah Azza wa says, al today. It is as if the day of judgment had already taken place. And this is already in the past. It's history. Your suffering is gone. This is how close it is. As uh, it's said in Arabic, innama an nasru sabru sa'a. Victory is a result of persevering for an hour. An hour in, in Arabic, sa'a in Arabic doesn't really mean 60 minutes, but it means a short while, right? So Allah Azza wa says, so today, what means? So today, meaning the day of judgment, those who believed are laughing at the disbelievers. So it is as if the believers and the disbelievers died and were resurrected 
and the day of judgment happened and the believers saw the pleasures and bliss Allah Azza wa Jal had promised them and they're enjoying it and seeing these wicked being punished and laughing at them. What do you imagine this did to the hearts of the believers? When Allah Azza wa Jal put them in this mood, Allah Azza wa Jal made them live this incident, this event, the event of the Day of Judgment, with all the joy, all the bliss, all the pleasures, all the bounties and favors they will see, all things that they cannot perceive, but Allah has given them hints about them. What kind of impact this, did this have on their hearts? And that's why the generation of the companions was the most solid on faith. The most steadfast on faith. They would not compromise. They would not give up their faith for anything. That's why when Khabbab ibn al-Arat was punished and they will put heated rods to the state of it becoming red and put it out in his back and that the only thing that would put out the fire under him was his flesh melting and going on it. And yet, he refused to give up his faith. This shows how firm these people were on faith. And had it not been for their firmness upon faith, Islam would not have reached me and you. Because after the death of Muhammad وسلم, Islam spread in the globe left and right. In all directions. These people took that mission. That firm heart is what resulted in this. They gave up everything for Allah Azza wa Jalla. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to join us with these people and join us with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al Firdaus Al Ahla. Ala al Araiki Yanduru. On adorned couches, observing. Again, the couches mentioned previously. The believers will be sitting on these couches, enjoying themselves. And part of the joy is that Allah Azza wa Jal will show them. The suffering of the disbelievers who used to mock them and torture them, and punish them, and harm them. Because what it, what it does, it will prove to them that Allah, what Allah promised is true. And the last verse Allah Azza wa says, Have the disbelievers not been rewarded this day for what they used to do? Again, this day, the day of resurrection. Again, all these tenses used in the verses are to reflect the shortness of suffering for the believers, yarhamukallah, and the shortness of enjoyment for the disbelievers. It is only but a short period and then you will face the consequence of denial and disbelief. This concludes the, uh, the last, the, this, la this last verse concludes the Surah Al-Mutaffifin. Uh, to summarize, the first set was uh, addressing a, a, an evil practice uh, in transaction amongst people, which is Tatfif, uh, which is given less than what is due which results from denial or great sinning, persistence in sinning. And then Allah described the state of the wicked and described part of their punishment. And the third set of verses, Allah Azza wa described the uh, bliss and reward awaiting the pious and righteous believers. And then the last set described uh, part of the life of the believers and their sufferings from 
the, uh, the suffering they had with the disbelievers and the harm they received from the disbelievers. And Allah consoled the believers throughout this uh, surah to make their hearts firm and steadfast upon faith. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us and to make our hearts steadfast and firm on faith. Allahumma ameen wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma bhamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubulik.